so we have already one brick with the mortar and we need to make a small wall like small section and uh, we can go from the east or in your case maybe from the north and uh, uh, first of all we need to put the lines like a helping lines which uh, we're going to follow and this is a um, reference plant so you know the brick module we have like uh, dimensions 200 in 200 millimeters there's three bricks it's always repeating so offset 200 <laughs> Then we can make three lines. So this brick with the mortar is already in the group. So we we can take like a this group and just copy them. So we can click on the group and um, with this one press copy and grab the corner. So, uh, with this with the small box you can grab the corner ah sorry uh yeah copy and there is like option Fuck. sorry <laughs> um copy and there's option multiply this mean it's gonna you're gonna copy like many times how you want how much you want So we can, we can check also in 3D what's going on. You can see we already have the first layer of the brick and it looks okay. So we can repeat in the next layers. So uh, the next step that I would like to do is uh, to, to find like a half of the brick because the bricks are not going like straight. They're crossing each other. So the same with the reference plan. You see there's like triangle. It's this mean it's the middle of the brick. And we can take and just draw the line. Uh, with the control, you can uh, select all the groups and click on them. That's mean you're gonna pick all of the groups in the same time and just copy them. So that's how we are, how far we are right now. And uh, the last one is a little bit tricky because we need to adjust the mortar because dimension is 200. Uh, if you're gonna put only like three bricks with the mortar, it's not gonna it's not gonna be 200. It's two extra millimeters for the brick layers. When they can, they when they are building the wall, they have always like two millimeters tolerance. And you need to fill in. So again, we choose with the uh, control. We click all the groups, and we need to again copy them. You can see there's a small distance, so this means we need to go inside the group and adjust the mortar. It should be two millimeters bigger. I can it's going down? Uh, because it's stuck to the reference plane. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we also sketched in the reference plane so it will always go down to the reference plane after editing. 
Yeah, and then it's. Uh, so you can do. Uh, when you copy it, you have option to unjoin. Uh, okay. If you copy it, you have constraint. Uh, Enjoying the geometry. When you're making a copy tool, you have the option to disjoin something from the reference plane, but this one doesn't want to go. Uh, so you can do if you edit it and then you just move it up again. Yeah, because okay. it's gonna go down. If, it's, if you sketch something in the reference plane and then you move it up, it will always want to go back to the plane that you sketched it in because it's like constrained to it. So, so try to go down every time. So when you edit it, just put it up again. Uh, or you can create another reference plane in that one. In you just copy the reference plane and you choose uh, another host. Uh, host can be a reference plane, it can be a level or other stuff. So if you click on the geometry that you want, uh, can you click on something? And uh, if you go to modify architecture, uh, edit in place. Excuse me, edit it first. Where is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, if you double click on the ah, okay. <laughs> um, you click on the brick and you can change pick new in the placement uh, or edit work plane. And then if you create another reference line, then you can click that reference line to make it. Yeah, but you need uh, to call the reference line. That's the problem. Hmm? You need to make put the name on the reference plan. But you can pick a line later. Uh, pick a line. Uh... Just cancel it out and create a reference plane for that brick. I mean, uh, that was a little bit easier, maybe. So yeah, there's also option. Basically, we're gonna delete the last part I just created, and again, I'm just gonna adjust only this brick, and after that, I'm gonna copy in the in the top layer. <coughs> So we need the extra two millimeters. Uh, we're directly going to put the two millimeters in the bottom. So we have this brick with this two millimeter extra. And again, we need to make a copy. So we can grab the corner. Up top corner, so we have, and then we just now we, do, we need to copy this. And in 3D, we can check what's going on, and it looks like we start build a wall. And the same right now, uh, how far we need to build, do you know? Uh, I have two, two modules. Okay. So the next module, we're going to do this one. With the same control, we're clicking on the groups and uh, we need to copy them in the top of the, the next layer. Same we are doing here. And again, we need to copy. <clears throat> So this should be in top, and then we, and the, again we need to adjust this, the last layer of the brick of the mortar. Going up. So it's down because the reference line is down. We're working on this plane. Yes. Uh, not really. Because you're not gonna just mean if you're gonna copy, you mean if you reveal that three layers, right? Yeah. So if you're gonna copy again, this brick is gonna be in the same place. Why yeah. don't you copy the second and third? Don't you go with the midpoint and then copy it? 
But it's gonna still, it's still, I mean, it's still gonna be. Well, like you, you split uh, the second layer, so you don't copy it, so you take this mid one and then you do it. So can we do that with this layer? <coughs> Yeah, you can uh, yeah, so yeah, so you know, them, I can show so okay so we need to move right now on the last and uh, we can click on the on the group again and uh, make copies and I think it's gonna be enough to understand how to build the wall So this is what we got in 3D. So the next step, I would like to show how to build the uh, insulation. So we're going from the top, from the top view. And uh, insulation, we have distance is 202 millimeters for your case. So again, we can take a reference plan. And first of all, maybe take smaller uh, scale, one to five, um, reference plan. In offset, you can type uh, 202 millimeters. Here you go. And the concrete wall also, we can make in the same time full measurement for the whole wall. And the concrete wall, you have 100. So again, in offset, you can uh, type 100. And uh, there's also distance between the between the wall and insulation for the moisture. Otherwise, if you're gonna it's gonna be too close, it's it's really dangerous for the bricks and for the all wall. So there's always a gap, at least 10 millimeters. But we will put the 12. So that's mean all the isolation will be smaller. It's going to be 190 millimeters. So it's again, um, so isolation is it's the same principle of how we made the brick. It's a uh, model in place. Um, we can type also generic model. Uh, we can name it insulation. and extrusion so we know the isolation should be here between the reference plans so we can take this one and just here uh, in the same time we can also put the materials directly um, it's going to be rock wool We don't have. Uh. So we have found the rock wool. But they don't have a picture. We're gonna upload the picture from the from our computer. Basically, you have download. You can download the picture and upload in the Revit and adjust the picture, and you can get like really nice uh, renderings. It's gonna be really realistic. Uh, so, oh, cool. And uh, in appearance, uh, there is image. We can we click on the image. 
and um, so here we go it's already in our computer uh, the image so we're gonna upload the Rockwell installation image <laughs> click OK in 3d we will see how big it is so right now we can adjust the size and click finish so we have already our wall with the isolation and uh, next step is from the level zero we're going to build also the concrete wall this interior wall which is 100 in your case yes so this is the same again architectural uh model in place uh, now we can take uh wall in, in, i mean it doesn't matter really you can also take a generic model and just type you, you don't even need to type really because if we, right now we are building like it's just for your understanding what you're building so wall again extrusion Okay, um, we can change also the category of the materials, and now it's concrete. This one. Click finish. In the 3D, you will see it's already like it's some kind of sandwich for our wall. And you can adjust all the layers how you want. And show them on the angles. Okay, the next, uh, we need to make a like foundation, which is going to be legal blocks. So we have already we have built the wall, this sandwich basically, and right now we need to put the legal blocks and foundation under. So we need to go from the north, um, the scale should be smaller, it's easier to work, and uh, this reference plans we don't re we don't need this ones really we can delete them this we can keep it because uh, the legal blocks uh it's it's our, uh, almost oh, okay in your case it's a little bit smaller uh it's uh, 9 390 so we can also again we can adjust the reference plan and uh, you can type 390. So the Liga block is going to start here and it's going to end here. So we can delete this ones. The, 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 this lines is just going to disturb us. Oh, okay. We need also. Um, need to draw all the details in the same level. Um, so I, it's again, it's architectural model in place, um, generic model. Okay, floor. Well. Extrusion pick a plane so in this case we need again we need to choose the plane from the which plane we're going to start working and uh, you can see like it's when you can see like blue line you also can uh, click tab it's going to make a like a round box blue box that's mean you're picking the plane when you have to pick the plane we can make a legal block and um, so we need to divide also um, this uh, 390 in uh, three parts. 
because we have isolation between the Liga blocks. So click on measurements and there is option to make them equal. That means all the lines right now are the distance between the lines are equal. They're the same. Uh, okay, and the net measurements for the legal block. So this part is 390, and um, this should be 195. So, and uh, we're going to build this. So again, if you know the measurements, we can take the reference plan and uh, type um, 195. And we know the legal block should end here. So, so we're going to build like two parts. It's like a concrete part, and inside, in the middle, is going to be isolation part. And uh, now we can change also. Um, Yeah, we can upload this one and just ch change the picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be our legal blocks texture click OK and uh, in the same right now we are not out of the group we're still in the group so we need also to create uh, isolation between these two blocks and it's again create extrusion pick a plane in the middle and uh, So we also can type um, insulation. Select and uh, insert the picture, polyester. So in 3D we will see what's going on. So this is almost legal block, but we need to adjust the measurements. It just has to be how it should be. <laughs> so we know um, the width is 490. I can also take reference plan and uh, just type 490 from the beginning till the end. And just drag them. In opposite way, I need to put the measurements in opposite way. Create reference plan uh, four hundred ninety. So we have our legal block and we just need to place them place below the, the wall. 
so we can click on the group uh, yeah and uh, first of all finish finish the model so right now we are clicking on the on the legal block you can see that everything is blue that means we are in one group and just now we need to move it under the wall copy so and now we also can um, we need to make we need to two layers of legal block so we're just uh, gonna copy this ones and but first of all I need to make a reference plan just to find the middle and um, I can click all of the groups and copy Can adjust also so in 3d we'll see what's going on okay in the next step uh, we need to make footing uh, which is concrete footing with the uh, uh, steel rebars inside so we again we can go from the north and um, the footing is should be like it's always should be like at least the thickness of the wall i mean of the legal blocks or even more but we will build the same thickness what we have from the legal blocks because you have one family you have family house one build like a one floor a single floor okay yeah again uh, uh model in place generic model so extrusion pick a plane and uh, you can type 200 400 200 420 and uh, choose the material which is going to be concrete So the next step uh, is going to be a little bit different because we're going to make like rebars and it's going to be round extrusions, but st still we need to go to the north. Oh, control Z. So um, this is the same architectural um, model in place, generic models. Uh, extrusion, pick a plane. And uh, we can take a reference plan and offset. So I don't know. Right now we can take uh, the rebar should be, I can say, 120 millimeters from the edges. We can type offset 120. Okay, take less. Uh, we can take 60, 60 millimeters from the edge. And uh, it's going to be inside here. It's going to be rebars, like fully around the, all the footage. And after then, there's like rebars around the four rebars. <laughs> so we have four bigger rebars. You're just going to going to hold all the construction basically in a in a uh, in a footing and we can also add the uh, material which is going to be metal okay 
click on this 3d you can see what's going on so you can see the metal rebars are sticking out from the concrete and it should be inside the concrete it's like that but there is also an option if you're going to click on the rebars and uh, you're going to click also on cut oh, first of all you need to finish the model yeah. um, there's option cut if you're going to select uh, the concrete and rebars uh, you have read uh, you have cut like uh, holes in the concrete basically if you're going to if i going to hold if i going to hide the uh, rebars you will going to see the holes in the middle eh and you can see through Basically, there should be rebars inside. The next, what we need to do is we need to make a, like a sweep around uh, around these four bigger concretes. We, again, we're going to the north. We're the same architectural, modern place, generic models. In this case, we're going to choose sweep. Um, the sweep is you need to make a path, and after that, you can create the profile. And it's th this means all the profile is going to follow the path, and it's going to create like a shape that you want. First of all, you need to sketch the path, and you also need to pick a plane. Um, Just make around the around the rebars. So we have create our path, and if you can see here, this line with the red dot in the middle, the, uh, we need to create a profile there, and it's going to extend all the way up, up around the path. So uh, click on finish the path, and after that, we need to uh, edit the profile, and it's going to show options uh, from the which way you want to create the profile, and we can make it from the east. Open the view. You can see our crossed and we need also a round round profile and it should be smaller than a previous one we can take uh, three millimeters that means total gonna be six and uh, need to move this profile here and click OK so in the 3d view you can see the line this is the path and if you're gonna click okay you can see we have create like a mm, metal rebar who's gonna hold the four rebars and after that we just we can make also we can change the uh, materials which is also should be metal and uh, here we can make copies Oh, yeah, finish. And we have our mesh. What next? Okay, right, so we are at the point where we have our wall, we have our foundation, and we're missing a floor. Uh to get sort of a complete basic for the key junctions that we're going to work further on later. Uh, so we're going to model the slab, the installation of the slab, and the sand bed underneath. Uh, we're going to move to the north elevation. And basically we need to create a slab, which is going somewhere here. Oh, excuse me, this way, because the exterior side is on this way. 
Uh, so first what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop down a little bit those slicker blocks so the slab can lie onto them. Uh, so I'm gonna go into the model. I did the extrusion and the slab as I can see it should be 100 millimeters. So I'm just gonna put it to uh, the leak of block to 95 high. Accept it. Uh, and instead of changing all of them, I'm just gonna copy, it's gonna be quicker. Multiple, excuse me. All right, so we got it prepared. We got a space for the slab. Uh, so we can create by extrusion the same way as we created the rest model in place. Uh, I'm just going to choose something like floss. Okay. I'm just going to put like a slab. And we're going to model it by extrusion. I'm going to model this using uh, one of planes available for me right now. I'm going to click on the wall and I'll sketch with rectangle. Uh, it doesn't really matter how long, we're just going to adjust it later, uh, the appearance of it. Uh, we can change material to make it concrete. Uh, cast in situ, for example. Click OK. I move to 3D. I'm going to see how it looks. I'm going to extend it over through the whole wall. Let's say it's going to be equal to the look. But it's very ugly. I don't like it. So I'm just quickly change to something else. Uh, let's say this one. Uh, it looks better. Uh, it's going to be the same way as with uh, Concrete Foundation. It also needs reinforcement. So we're going to uh, model it in a similar way from the north uh, elevation. We're going to use model in place. Uh, let's do the same thing. Just gonna put reinforcement, uh, and we can model by extrusion or by swept. Easy is of course extrusion. I do not really use sweep unless I'm forced to do that, like in the previous case. Uh, so I'm gonna just prepare a reference plane, uh, and let's say that it's gonna be somewhere in the middle of the slab. Create by extrusion. Pick a plane. I'm gonna pick the slab as a as my plane. I'm gonna use circles uh, to put in uh, the rebus. And let's say that it's gonna be a radius of five. I'm gonna move it up a little bit so it touches the bottom of the circle touches the reference plane. And I'm just gonna use a command. Uh, oh, you can't arrive inside of the sketch. Never mind. And I'm gonna use copy. I just say that I'm gonna copy it every 200 till the end. every 200 every 200 till the end of the slab. Oh, this one is not equal. Great. Right, I'm gonna accept it and look into 3D. What happens? Uh, so I got a basic reinforcement. I'm gonna change material. Uh, to the same material as the rest of the reinforcement. Tell that, for example, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller so it doesn't stick out so much. And usually the reinforcement of the slab uh, is made uh, as a mesh, uh, not just uh, longitudinal reinforcement. So I'm gonna do the same thing from the other side. When I create extrusion by sketch, when I pick a plane, I'm gonna use that slab. And I'm gonna also create uh, circles right here, the same diameter. I'm gonna move it down so they won't uh, overlap each other. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm just gonna copy it every 200 millimeters. And I'm just maybe gonna move them out uh, to the left so they stick out from the uh, from the slab so I can see it inside of 3d how it looks like and I can extend them oh, so you can see the reinforcements crossing but not overlapping each other
I'm going to change the material to the metal. And click finish model. I just hide them a tiny bit so they won't stick out so much. Uh, after Under the slab, of course, we need to have a reinforcement. Uh, uh, reinforcement, the insulation uh, to meet the U-value requirements. Principle is the same, model in place. We're just going to choose something, uh, floors. Hmm. Polystyrene. And we're going to use polystyrene as our installation. We're going to pick a plane uh, on the slab. And usually you are not putting the installation as one block, uh, simply because if it's one block and they go next to each other, uh, you can have a cold bridging because the air, the cold, just have a straight way up to your construction. So you usually put like few layers of them. You break down like you have 100 millimeters or something like that. You break, for example, in two or in three. Uh, so if you take 120, it would have like three times 40 millimeters, and they'll be like. Uh, they will not be on top of each other they will be lying something like that so they will not be a direct contact with the concrete so the cold won't get past it uh, and uh, create a cold bridge uh, so we're gonna model a few layers of them starting from here and let's assume that it's gonna be 120 or something like that so I'm gonna do 3 times 40 so I'm going to set the thickness of it to 40. I'm just going to try to align those two so they stay together. I'm going to change the material. Uh, I'm going to create a new one. I'll just call it polystyrene. And Revit by default, uh, he has inside of himself, he has a texture. Uh, which looks quite good, I would say. I just need to find it. And I build this one. I'm just gonna take that. Yeah, doesn't matter. I'm gonna accept it. And you can see in the 3D that we have a polystyrene over there. I'm gonna extend it. In enough elevation, I'm just gonna copy it uh, three times. So I said we have the buttons, and you can, for example, uh, in this case, if you want to show it, you can also show it in 2D or in 3D. Uh, you can make it, for example, I can make it half, I can make it, for example, 300, and then just copy it. Next time, so you can show that these are not, uh, they're not stuck on top of each other. Something like it's your way, whether you want to show it or not, but later on you can also show it in 2D. Finish the model, and from the main construction, only sand bed is left, which is under the polystyrene. It's used to uh, even out the ground before we are putting polystyrene, of course, because earth is soil is sometimes hard to level, so it's something with a smaller grain uh, to level the area. So I'm going to create a sand bed, I'm pick a plane, I'm going to use one of those planes, I'm going to make it also by extrusion, and let's set a thickness to 200, it's pretty standard. Uh, change the material, I think there should be sand somewhere inside of Revit already, so I'm going to check for it, there is one, let me check, yeah, we can use it. Of course, uh, Revit quality of the textures is not the best, so I advise you to choose your own to make it look way better. Uh, Alright, so like basic is already done. We can create some uh, soil around it, for example, if you want to show it, uh, to also get the grade level from one of the sites. Uh, so let me quickly model uh, a bit of soil. soil. Also by extrusion, I'm just going to make a really quick, uh, I'll pick a plane, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just going to make a really quick sketch. So I'm just going to choose some lines. I want around this one, this one. I'm just picking lines currently. Uh, and let's say I'm going to take this line. And I'm going to use comment to trim those lines to make them align with each other. 
Hop. And create line here. And the thing with the brick and the soil is that uh, there has to be a plinth on the brick unless brick is hard then uh, to avoid it from contact from moisture from the ground. I mean that usually there is about 100 millimeters uh, from the brick of the plinth. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, we got a little bit of soil. I'm just going to change the material. So like earth. I extrude it. Uh, so basically, the, even though we have a level of zero, the ground level is actually going to be below it. If I accept it, we got a base the key junction. Uh, we can make a couple of adjustments. Uh, for example, uh, concrete can't just stand on top of the slab. It needs a sort of connection. Uh, so I'm just going to pull it up somewhere here. I'm going to just use this uh, level as a reference. Uh, I'm going to go inside of that model, for example. I'm going to create extrusion and I'm going to create a mortar bed for the, uh, for the concrete to stand on. And I'm going to use the same material as, for example, for a brick, just for the purpose of demonstration. Um, of course, you can detail your 3 junctions as much as you want. The more details, probably is gonna, the better it's going to look. Uh, but do not overdo it because sometimes you might have later troubles with actually showing it uh, in the 3 key junctions and annot annotating it properly. Uh, but yeah, the more effort you put into it, the better it's gonna look. Uh, how, of course, how you're gonna apply and what kind of mater materials you're gonna apply is gonna have a huge impact on it as well. Uh, so if you want to make it really good, you're gonna have to spend a little bit of time uh, doing it. Uh, one last thing that I wanted to show you that is quite cool and it's sort of make uh, also a connection with your material manufacturers. Uh, for example, I'm just going to put a, uh, I'm going to model a vapor barrier. Yeah, I'm going to make it by extrusion. A bigger plane. I'm just gonna. It's just gonna be very little one. I'm just gonna follow the path, something like that. Let's say, and I'm gonna make it one millimeter thick. So I'm gonna use offset and trim those lines. Uh, I'm using command uh, trim to corner. I'm just using a shortcut, uh, which is uh, TR. Trim it. I'm gonna close the endings of it. I'm just gonna extend it so I have a place to work with. Uh, and I, it doesn't really look good because I put it on Lika, which is uh, put back, uh, set back. But the idea of it that you can make it look really great and connect it to your materials uh, simply by trying to make it look as much as possible. I always used uh, Icopal for a uh, water barrier. So I'm going to try to make it look like it and probably using the logo of the, theirs. Uh, so I'm going to create a material. I'll just name it Icopal. Go to appearance. I'm gonna select a texture. I'm just gonna navigate to the texture that I have from previous semester that I used. I copal membrane. I just uh, I just took their logo basically and edited it, and I'm gonna apply it uh, to the key junctions. 
and later you can make a really nice connection that you're actually using the, the material that you specified. So it looks exactly the same, or it's sort of named uh, by the texture itself. So it's also quite uh, uh, quite nice look that you can create. Uh, yeah, so we get the basic principle of how to model 3D key junctions. Uh, of course, later on, you will want to uh, adjust every single tip face of the 3D key junction to make it look as good as it's possible. Uh, so we'll be just like moving the handles everywhere all over the place to show as many elements as possible. Like, for example, this one would be sort of unacceptable at this moment uh, because it doesn't really make sense. It's flying somewhere in the air, right? So you will want to extend it to make it stick on top of another, for example, Lika block. Uh, but for the purpose of presentation, uh, it's fine. We're gonna show you a ways uh, how to how to actually get the image out of it. Uh, you can either use the 3D view itself. I'm just gonna turn off the uh, the work plane. If you go to sheets, you can create new sheets. Uh, let's say that I'm gonna use a standard one. I'm gonna load something that uh, we will find in the front uh, that we sort of gave you. We prepared. It's an edited Kia title block that I'm sure you already received. It's just the block title block is a little bit smaller and a little bit information contained into it that you can use fill out. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can use uh, this 3D view to put it on one of those sheets uh, and annotate it. Um, to prevent it from moving, there is an option on the bottom bar right here that you can lock the view. Save orientation and lock the view. And in this case, since that's the only 3D view, it's going to ask you to create a copy of it. So I'm just going to name it like a foundation to wall detail, whatever. OK. Uh, and it's locked. As you can see, I can't spin around it because it's locked. The cube is not working at all. So at this point, I can take it. I can take uh, this 3D view, I can drag it on one of my uh, title blocks, that will show up there. It's just a matter of a scale that you have to adjust or the size of the title block. So I'm just going to go in to that view. Uh, have you been introduced to title blocks before? Yeah, so you know how it works that you can enter the view by double clicking it and you can change, for example, a scale. So I'm just going to change the one to, to small. Uh, 1 to 25, not 1 to 10, uh, might be fine. And maybe I'm just going to hide those levels, right click, uh, hide in view, elements. Just going to drag it over. You can adjust the lines, you can move the title block, uh, the, uh, the title line, so on inside of it. And you have the 3D view going inside of it. Uh, you can annotate that view directly using annotate tab and text. Uh, of course, you can choose fonts, everything. You can edit type of that annotations. Uh, you can text font, text size, text colors, uh, the endings of the leaders, whether it can be arrow, it can be a dot. There's multiple options that you can play with to, to make it look nicer uh, on title block. You can only annotate because it's small. Oh, yes, you can only use annotations in a 3D view because it's locked. Otherwise, if it's unlocked, uh, they will not work. Uh, and if you unlock it and move the model, the annotations will go like bananas, basically, and they will be all over the place. So make sure that the uh, view is locked. And therefore, you can create some text. And let's say that this is going to be Rokul, for example. And you can, of course, edit it like... Uh, the arrow is not visible, so we can use, for example, uh, field dot three millimeters. No, that's heavy end. To make it more visible, what it's pointing at, and this way you can annotate the whole three D view, which you taken from the Revit. Another option is to take the three D view itself and render it. Uh, how to do that? In a view tab. Uh, of course, you, have, you can use a lot of external uh, rendering programs. For example, Enscape is one of those. Uh, I'll also show you that one. Uh, but you can use the basic Revit rendering uh, feature, which you can find under the View tab. 
and he has a presentation render, rendering cloud. Uh, I would strongly suggest you to use rendering cloud. It's basically the same thing. It's just that you can send it to the cloud and the cloud's gonna render for you and you can work during that time. Because if you click render, sometimes the rendering process can take some time. So if I click render, I can choose a region that I want to render. It's gonna be this one, for example. I can specify the, uh, the quality of it that I want. Let's say that I'm just gonna take the lowest one for, for the uh, presentation purpose. I'm gonna render it. Is the rendering process coming up? Since it's draft, it should take like only a minute or so, a few seconds. I have a basic image, but you can see that the background is not really nice. So I'm just gonna go to a color. I'm just gonna make it white and I have to re-render it. Uh, you can save it to project, you can export it. I'm gonna save it to project. I'm just gonna call it the same. And basically I can do the same thing. I can create new title block. And I can take uh, the rendering. They are saved inside of the project browser under the rendering uh, category. And I can drag the image onto the sheet. And it's gonna show up right here. The quality is full because I used draft view, uh, draft option of rendering. And you can use annotation text to annotate properly every single element of it is an image. Uh, how the cloud works, I'm just going to quickly introduce you to the rendering from the cloud. Uh, view tab, rendering cloud. Uh, as a Kia student, I think that's how it works, that we have infin infinite amount of tokens. No, we have like two million. Two million, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's more than needed uh, because it's sort of paid. Uh, but yeah, as a Kia student, you have it for free. Uh, few steps on the screen select 3d view service will notify when your images are done and then you can view the gallery and download the images please save the project now i just need to save it uh, desktop let's call it project one very useful all right rendering cloud continue and the little dialog box will uh pop out and you have options to do that uh, output type, you can make a panorama, you can make uh, some other types of image. I'm just going to go with still image. Render quality, I'll choose final. Image size, I'll choose the biggest one. Exposure, advanced. Uh, it's just a matter of how the post-processing will go. And I'm going to click a render. You can also click email me when complete. But I'm just going to click a render. And now it's going to send this scene to the cloud. Uh, it takes a few seconds usually, unless your 3 junction is very big. Uh, you can click continue background. Even when it's sending, or usually it takes very short time. We we'll see about this one. And in here, you can see that rendering project one is being rendered online. It shows up. If you want to go to that one, to the process, you can either click here and you can get the pop out render process progress, or in here, you can click render gallery and it's going to open for you a browser, your own browser, of course, and uh, it's going to direct you to the site where you can see all of your renderings that you did so far. Uh, so I'm going to click Render Gallery, and it's going to open out the disk site. With all the renderings that you did so far. Uh, and this one is not visible yet, because I guess it's still rendering. Yeah. Uh, so you can navigate through all of your renderings that you did so far. I'm just going to open examples. Uh, and I used a uh, few of them, and you can navigate through every part that you rendered. I use cloud a lot because it saves time, uh, and you can still work on the project when it's rendering in the cloud. Uh, oh yeah, a uh, few tips on how to annotate. Uh, I know, for example, let me open this one, for example. I'm going to put it to full screen to uh, keep your annotations are uh, sort of aligned, so it creates a frame around your 3D. Uh, make sure that the lines are not crossing each other, that they are as close to the target as it's possible, uh, so it's easy to read. Uh, what else? You can make... Uh, that's a nice thing that actually Yanis was the first one in our class to do that, and it was a great idea to make uh, sort of zoom-ins on very uh, complicated or crucial parts of your key junctions, where you can show the connection and annotate it properly. Uh, on your title blocks, 
it's really nice to have uh, key uh, key indicators where the section where the particular detail is located. So you can see that it's a 2D section and that is basically this detail. And there's also a 3D section to show where the details uh, located. Mm, is there anything else? Yeah, try to try to make sure that you have as little white space on your uh, on your paper as is possible, because it simply it simply will look empty uh, if you do so. Uh, pay, pay attention to the colors. Uh, don't make them really because in the screen it looks a little bit uh, lighter. But then you are going to print out the sheet. It's going to look uh, really dark and you're not gonna be able to see nothing so be really careful with that also with the colors mm -hmm. and light and very good practice that alan introduced to us as well is printing your stuff um, because when you print you get another look onto the drawing other than just on a computer screen or you can mark up things of course and as Jani said like it looks different on a paper than a computer because you don't have a backlight that is lighting up the whole image uh so print uh but not too much, don't waste paper. Don't don't print with you change just uh, by five millimeters something, of course. Uh, yeah, but it's a very, very good practice uh, to do that. It helps a lot.